Okay, before we start this video, I need you to listen here. Do not buy any of the cameras that you see in this video. You don't need them. You have too much gear already, and that's okay. I have too much gear, you have too much gear. We're in this together, but I need you to promise me you won't buy another camera after watching this video. Because I know you're thinking about it. You don't want it, okay? Okay, just, okay. Cameras, we have so many of them. If you're a film photographer like me, you probably have a lot of cameras in your collection. If you don't have a lot of film photography equipment, you are doing better than like 90% of us in terms of like your finances. And I'm proud of you and I wanna be more like you because whenever I see a new YouTube video showing off some fancy new camera, I feel that urge, that pull to like, ooh, maybe go look it up on eBay, see how much that body is going for, see how much that lens is going for. And really quickly, I start to try and justify which cameras I should buy, why I need this new one, why it's gonna make my photography better, blah, 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 blah. The game goes on and on. But this video, I just wanna show off some of the cameras that I have, show you which ones I use a lot, which ones I don't use, why I like the cameras that I have, because over the years I've collected quite a few cameras. So today I'm just gonna go down the list of all the film cameras that I have. Some you may have heard of, some maybe you haven't. And I'll just go over which ones are my favorites and maybe even go over the ones that I'm gonna get rid of because frankly, I have too many in my collection and it's time to let some go, unfortunately. So without further ado, let's jump in. We'll check out some of the cameras I've got and we'll see uh, which ones I like. All right, this first camera is the Petri FT. It is the first camera that I bought all the way back in the far off year of like 2013. I wanted to get into film photography so bad back then. I bought this off of like Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or something. I paid $35 for this camera plus uh, this 55 millimeter lens, a couple of broken lenses that I ended up tossing because they were like falling apart. Um, so this is the only lens I have for this camera. And this is where I got started. I didn't actually start shooting film photography for several more years after buying this camera, namely because I think I was just really intimidated by the process. Um, looking back on it now, I have a lot of regrets not starting sooner. Namely, um, when I was in community college, I thought maybe I should take some darkroom classes, but I skipped them. And I think it, I missed out on a lot of growth that I'm just catching up on now. So I might have been a better photographer now if I had done it back then. So starting young is never a bad thing. And this is the camera that I started on. It's just a fully manual SLR camera, very simple controls. You just have your shutter speed up top. It works great, it takes 35 millimeter. There is a light meter in here, but never actually put batteries in this camera. I would just use my phone and different, you know, light meter apps. And that was fine. That's all I really needed with this camera. And some of my favorite pictures to this day, I took on this little film body here. Super, you know, standard, nothing crazy. It's a good camera. I don't shoot on it much anymore. Mostly if I do, it's for nostalgia's sake of going back to, you know, how it felt back then. But the one major perk of this camera that I can't get over is the sound. Like, listen to this. It's beautiful. This is the most beautiful sounding camera I own. And I think about every time getting rid of it, I'm like, ah, but the sounds this camera makes, I, I shouldn't get rid of it. So yeah, this was what I got started on and it's, uh, it's, it's a favorite. It's not my favorite to shoot on, but it's, it, you know, close to my heart. Yeah, Petri FT. It's a good find. If you pick one up for cheap, it's a good find. But again, we're not buying cameras for this video. So watch. Traveling even further back in time, I have this Zeiss Icon. It's the uh, Netar 515-2. It is a very, very old camera. It's the oldest camera in my collection. And this thing also still like absolutely can bang out images. The billows, for some amazing reason, are in like perfect condition. There's no light leaks in this camera. The shutter still works pretty well. Um, some of the slower shutter speeds in this camera are a little uh, sticky. So if I'm going slower than like 50th of a second I'm always using like a cable release and throwing it in bulb mode and that's perfect for me um, I'm pretty much more using this camera during the day but um, I have plans for a video uh, with some sim still in this camera that I'm looking forward to so um, but it's medium format it shoots uh, nine six by nine negatives so very very large you only get about eight shots out of this camera when you're shooting on it so if you want to be pretty economical it's my only medium format camera right now but at some point I want to uh, do an upgrade. I'll still keep this camera around, but I just want to have like a more reliable camera, you know, because the main downside of this is you're like, you know, you're winding your, your film through the camera and there's no stops. There's no uh, way to stop you from double exposing. So you're just looking through the little, little red window in the back here. 
but you know, it's a, it's a throwback. It really slows you down. If you want a camera that's gonna, you know, make you really think about your film process, this is the guy for you or anything like this. There are millions of these out there. But again, you're gonna find, you know, lots of variations of different lenses, um, different sizes of this camera, different, you know, film types. And the main thing to look out for, again, is like shining a light through these and looking through the back of the camera to make sure there's no holes or anything like that. Cause that's a quick way to, you know, ruin your film and it's a bad time, but yeah. Zeiss Icon, another another banger from the past. I love this camera, it's very dear to me. Even though I overpaid when I bought this, it was kind of a ripoff. All right, so moving forward in time here, quite a ways, we have my Canon AV-1. This was gifted to me from a friend. It was just the body and um, it didn't work when I first got it, but pretty quickly I was able to take it to Blue Moon, my local uh, film lab, and they were able to clean out the contacts for me, give the camera a once over and it, it shoots like brand new. I mean, as you can see, this thing here, it's just mint condition. It's a beautiful camera. I absolutely love it. I have this 35 to 105 lens on here, and this is like a go-to travel camera for me right now. I have a power winder on here as well, and it's just, you know, kitted out to the nines, and it's, it's perfect. It shoots great. Um, the only issue with it right now is the um, light seals in the back are wearing down just from age. I need to replace them because uh, my last roll of Portra 800 that I shot through this got totally cooked. Um, if you saw my video, my Cinestill road trip, um, <laughs> I took this camera there and all my Cinestill turned out great. When I threw in that Portra 800, it, uh, the camera couldn't take it or the film couldn't take the camera one or the other because it, it came out awful. So maybe I, you know, that's on me for doing a Cinestill road trip and using something not Cinestill, but this camera is still absolutely fantastic, super reliable. It's aperture priority only though, so no shutter speed control, which is, uh, I consider a downside. While I do love that I can just shoot this camera and go wild and know that my camera is doing all that exposure work for me, sometimes I do want that control, especially at night. So with this camera, um, that is kind of a trade-off and you know, it's, it's still great for 90% of what I do, but um, I just recently upgraded specifically to figure out that problem and I'll show you that camera that I bought. And that is the Canon F1. I bought this guy off Facebook Marketplace for 50 bucks and that is because it is technically broken. It needs a lot of work. I'm currently working on trying to just get the body cleaned up. I've done a ton already and when it came to me, this thing was in super rough shape. The owner was very, very like straightforward. Um, he gave me a good deal, but he was telling me like the shutter, uh, like timer gets stuck really easy. And so like, if you, if you knock this at all, literally at all, the whole body locks up and the shutter speeds, you know, most of them are okay. It does, you know, it does still fire, but it's just, it, it needs some CLA work. So I'm going to be taking this in at some point soon here. And once I have this thing fully up and running, this will be kind of become my new main Canon like SLR film body, which I'm really excited for. I love the versatility of it. I love, you know, that you have access to your, um, you know, all these modifications and whatnot. So having that top down Instagram look, you know, nowhere better than the F1, but uh, I'm just looking forward to getting this thing back in working order. I've, I mean, this camera is, is legendary. It's Peter Parker's camera from uh, Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. That's my main draw to it. And yeah, I'm just excited to have this piece of photography history in my collection working, hopefully. So we'll see. Hopefully I didn't waste 50 bucks on it, but even if I did, she's a beaut. It's a great camera. Speaking of manual cameras with shutter control, this camera I got right at the beginning of COVID, literally the day before Portland went into lockdown back in 2020. I was at this uh, store called Scrap PDX. If you don't know what it is, it's just a place where people dump all their old art supplies and you can go through it and find like half used, pretty much whatever, any craft or you know art thing you might do, they have stuff from there. So it's a really cool place and occasionally they'll have weird lenses or weird cameras come floating in. I happened to catch them on a day where they had this camera plus two lenses there. And so for like $7 for this setup, plus one more lens for like six bucks, it was a heck of a steal to pick it up, even if it wasn't a good camera, which it, the camera's fine and the lenses are far from fine. It's an M42 thread mount. So, you know, you can put on like your Helios lenses on here. There's a lot of threaded lenses options out there. I haven't really bought into that system a whole lot yet. Um, I wanna find some nice lenses. I do have a Helios, but I haven't really used it much yet. 
but the lenses that this camera does, you know, it came with, they're, you know, they have a lot of uh, like fringing, they have a lot of color issues. So, you know, they're fine. Um, and the camera itself, it, you know, it does everything it's supposed to. It's got shutter control, aperture control. Um, the thing that I really like is there's a little switch on top and if you flick it, it lets you do double exposures. So that's like the main reason I'm holding onto this body is if I wanna start exploring double exposures on a 35 millimeter film camera. This guy has it built in and I haven't really uh, found many other options out there that are as cheap as I paid for this to do that. So, you know, <laughs> it's nice. I like having that option, so. But other than that, you know, it is your standard SLR. There's nothing really to write home about on this. Um, but it's fine. It's fine. You know, people like it. I like it when, you know, I use better lenses, I guess. You know. Jumping over to the land of point and shoots, I have here this Pentax Zoom 70. R and it's a super chunky point and shoot. I call this like a dad cam point and shoot because it is just absolutely thick. It is a brick of a camera. And I found this again at Value Village for like five bucks. It's, it's you know, it, this is one of those, I found it for Goodwill for five bucks kind of things. And it's great. It is uh, very comfortable to hold. It feels like you're bringing like a, your dad camcorder with you in a way. So that's why I always uh, call it my dad cam. But yeah, it came super clean, no issues. I've shot only one roll like a year and a half ago on this thing, but I just like it. I don't really use point and shoots a whole lot for film, but when, I, when I'm in the mood, this is the guy because it's just so chonky, so fun. It's just, a, it's just a great camera. Yeah, it's, I mean, it does what every point and shoot does, but you know, it does it with character, it does it with style. It's just a, uh, you know, it's a goofy little camera and I like it. It's good. Yeah, and it zooms. Switching formats, I've got these two, my Polaroids. Uh, I love them dearly. My SX70, of course, legendary in the Polaroid space. And then I've also got my One Step Flash that takes 600 film. And it's just, both of these are great for different reasons. Um, the SX70 is great for getting very, very precise Polaroids. Uh, if I'm shooting a bit more serious work or if I'm going on like a trip and I want a camera that's a bit more, I don't know, can kind of do everything for me, this is the one that I'm gonna choose. It's absolutely great. I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's like a legendary camera. Like these things have a reputation for a reason and um, they live up to it. I got this as an untested camera off of eBay at like a um, estate sale for like $80 which is a great steal for one of these cameras. And it came working well, um, it shoots great. I mean, the main thing you gotta worry about with uh, SX70 cameras is that the film chemistry has changed. You need to underexpose. I find, you know, swapping the wheel, the exposure wheel down like two stops of exposure usually is pretty good, but you gotta just experiment with it. Um, that's kind of the hardest part about these cameras is you don't really know what your exposure is gonna be. And there's a lot of trial and error work that goes into it. So. But I'm not using that. I've got my big old, you know, 600 film one. This thing, it's gonna do all your exposure automatically. Exposure is a bit more consistent. You don't have to worry about it as much. It's got this big old flash on it that is absolutely blinding. And it's great. I like to use this a bit more for like group events, hangouts with friends, whatever. And it just, it's fun. So you can hand it to other people and they don't need to think about how they're gonna use it. They can just point and shoot. And it's just, uh, it's it's fun and it's nostalgic and people get a kick out of seeing these things being brought around. So yeah, I, I love these. If you can find one of these for a good price, honestly, I think they're just fun to have. Um, but also Polaroid is a more expensive format to shoot. So I've been recommending my friends who think this is fun to shoot on Instax just because it's cheaper, it's more readily available, and it's gonna actually archive a little bit better than Polaroid stuff. So. I'm a, I'm a big believer in Instax and Polaroid, but I personally mostly shoot Polaroid and it's, it's been great. Yeah, it's a good time. Retro, it's a good throwback. Switching over to digital real quick. I have this Olympus Kamita. This is uh, this is a Digicam, you know, that Digicam craze that everyone was on about for a hot minute. Maybe they're still on, I don't remember, but this was just me wanting a little point and shoot. It's a like five megapixel camera, maybe even four. I actually don't remember if it's a five or a four. It's not shooting, you know, crazy pictures, but it's really fun to just bring around. I took this to the fair this summer recently, and that was like a great little time just to throw this in your pocket. It didn't really matter. Um, it's just a, a neat little 
pocket camera. It's shaped kind of like those like Olympus film cameras that everyone is paying a ton of money for, which is great to get the form factor, but your pictures are instant because they're, they're digital. They're just nice little JPEGs that are super tiny. The biggest downside with these cameras is they have their own proprietary SD cards. They go on these a little teeny tiny, let's see if you can see it, these teeny tiny Olympus cards. And these are really expensive. These are like $100 for a gigabyte. So if you're gonna shoot on one of these cameras, make sure it comes in the lot. Mine is only 16 megabytes. So I can, at the highest quality this takes, I get like 11 pictures. Um, so I'm always scaling down the photos, but I'm only taking around that many. I'm not usually like bursting off a ton throughout the whole day. And I'm fine with downscaling the image quality because that gives you more images you can put on the picture card. So if you, you know, downscale to the next highest resolution, you get like 72 photos, which is plenty. Um, I don't really shoot more than that. Yeah, it's just a fun little camera. It was like $50 new and or not new in box, but you know, used with all of its old accessories. And it came with the card, that's the biggest thing. With these kind of cameras, you want the card. Um, if not, shoot on something like Canon. Canon's point and shoots, they take SDs like normal. And that's great, because everyone's got an SD card just lying around somewhere. So, this guy's fun. One other major digital camera that I love to shoot with is my Fuji X100. Now this is not the X100V that TikTok has gone wild about. This is just the X100. It's the original, it's the one that started it all. Uh, I got turned onto this camera by a video by a YouTuber named Patrick Tommaso. He was shooting on one of these and I was like, oh, that's really cool that there's like the older ones. I didn't even know these existed before the X100V came out. So I was looking at these and I was able to find one for like $180 on Facebook Marketplace. Now the condition of this one is kind of rough. It's got a lot of scratches. When I got it, it's just reeked of cigarette smoke. You can tell this has kind of just been sitting for a number of years and someone was just getting rid of it. But I was happy to take it in. I gave it just a little, you know, the classic lens hood just to get kind of a bit more of that old school rangefinder look. And this was the first rangefinder I ever got. And I, I still shoot on this camera quite a bit. It takes very, very nice 12 megabyte JPEGs and RAWs. And the RAWs have a ton of editing latitude in this camera. I really, 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 really like shooting on this thing. I also love, it's got like a hybrid viewfinder so you can look through an LCD screen or you can just look straight through the viewfinder window and it's got moving frame lines that help you know, adjust for parallax. The autofocus, while not super fast, is reliable and it's fast enough for what I like to shoot, which is usually some street, but mostly like not super close to subject. So it's usually focusing to infinity or near infinity. Um, and yeah, I just throw this thing in auto and it does great. I just love, you know, it's just got a little exposure wheel in the back. So you can, you know, set your exposure plus two stops, minus two stops or anywhere in between. I just usually leave it at zero. Um, like I said, the RAWs are so good out of this camera, but I mean, you don't need me talking more about how good the X100s are because everyone's you know, everyone knows at this point, everyone on the internet's discovered this camera and they're really expensive. So I'm not upgrading anytime soon to like the X100T or whatever, because uh, I cannot afford to drop the kind of dough on one of these. So I stick with the X100 and it's great. It's super good. So can't recommend enough, but also too expensive. And we're not buying cameras. And before we bust out the Leica, there's of course the Coca-Cola point and shoot. This, you know, what more is there to say? It's a point and shoot. It looks like a Coca-Cola can. It shoots mediocre pictures. Honestly, the only time I really used this was at a bachelor party and uh, traveling for a buddy of mine's wedding. And uh, half the shots are like of my shirt. I couldn't tell when it was shooting. I couldn't tell when it was framed up right. The colors that came out of this thing were kind of funky, but at the same time, it's a super fun camera. I love the mechanism. I get a kick out of it. I love showing people this camera. Um, and just being like, look at how absolutely insane this bad boy is. These come in a, con like a ton of different stylings and colorways and brandings. Um, I know the Budweiser one is particularly popular, but I got the Coca-Cola one just because I figured that was a little easier to take more places um, and not get you know in trouble. So yeah, Coca-Cola one, it's, it's, it's fun. You know, if you can find one for a good deal, I think they are actually a lot of fun to own, if not just a good thing to throw on a shelf and appreciate owning, but um, in terms of like image quality, you know, you're probably gonna honestly do just about as good buying a point and shoot Kodak or Fuji camera from Walmart. So don't expect great things. Also the bummer with mine is the flash doesn't work. Even though I bought this thing new off eBay in its packaging, the flash doesn't work. So I'm trying to figure out if I can get it repaired or fix it myself. Cause I would love to use the flash on this camera, but right now, no dice. 
But yeah, Coca-Cola camera. What more can you ask for? All right, and last but not least, we have the Leica M5. This is my, my Leica dream camera. It is just, uh, it's great. I love having this camera. I've always wanted a Leica and uh, the M6 was just not an option. And while I could have gotten an M4 and I think I really, really enjoyed it, um, I went with the M5 because I like this kind of side ways, way of carrying the camera. It is a little bigger, but um, I don't mind the larger camera size. It, it's never been an issue. It works well. I always get surprised though, seeing other Leicas in person and seeing how much of a size difference there is between these and them. It really is like quite a substantial difference. Um, but regardless of that, Leica M5 gang is real. Um, I love talking to other M5 shooters and seeing them online, um, seeing their work. I just think there's an extra special bond between M5 shooters. Um, so we are a little, a little bit of the black sheep of the Leica community because, I mean, fair enough, these things are big and bulky. But at the same time, I think there are some great features in these. Namely, the shutter wheel overhang is phenomenal. I love that the shutter, uh, the shutter speed dial overhangs beyond the camera body, so it's very easy to hold the camera up to your eye and be able to click around through your shutter. Your, this is the first Leica that included a light meter, so you can see your light meter as you're adjusting your shutter speed or your aperture. It's just a great, great camera. Um, I usually run a 35 millimeter lens on here. Um, I have a Voigtlander f2.5 lens, but I just upgraded to a TT Artisans 50 millimeter lens and it opens up to f1.1. I really wanted that just for some extra low light capability. I also have an adapter coming to mount this lens to the camera that's been recording this video, my Canon EOS R, um, which is my main rig for shooting video. Um, I make movies on the side, I'm a cinematographer, so this is my camera that I shoot on. So being able to adapt as many of my lenses as possible to this camera is kind of my favorite thing just because there's a lot of different looks that each of my lenses give. Um, and this, I know, will give a lot of cool photography looks, but also some cool video looks, especially being able to open up that wide. So I'm very excited to be able to mount this on a digital camera. And I have my first roll, my first test roll, currently at the lab being developed at Blue Moon. And I cannot wait to see what these pictures look like with this lens. Um, it's been very, very nice to have though. It does make this a very bulky setup, but I don't know. I think it's gonna look good. I love the silver and black combo. My other lens is all black. So I have like some neat, uh, neat little setups here that I really, really appreciate. Yeah, but this is my main camera. This is my daily driver. Um, if I'm not sure what I need or what I'm gonna be shooting, I will probably take my M5 with either a 50 now or typically my 35 millimeter lens since 35 is my favorite. But yeah, M5, it's a good camera. You might be allowed to buy one, maybe. <laughs> All right, so that is my film camera collection. I have, a, like I said, a lot of cameras, probably too much, way more than anyone should have because like I said, there's a lot of these cameras I don't shoot on very often. I pretty much shoot 95% of my work on my Leica M5 and then my Canon AV1 kind of covers the rest for me. But just because I have those two cameras, you know, it's still, I feel that temptation to buy these cameras. And I think a lot of us enjoy it because we appreciate old analog equipment. And also a lot of these things sit on shelves for years and have been sitting for a long time. So having that opportunity to breathe new life into this equipment, I think is exciting for a lot of people and me included, you know, I love rescuing a camera from Goodwill, even if it's, you know, God, I already have one that I don't need. So some of these cameras I'm going to be selling just because I don't think I should be hoarding them, you know, from other people who will actually use them because it's nice as it is to have them they went from one shelf to now they're on mine and they could be out there making great photos. You know, if you're buying cameras, it's great to have a bunch of them, but at the same time, make sure you're giving them out to people who actually will use them. I know one of these cameras I'm donating to a buddy of mine who's asking me about how film photography works and I'm just telling him like, hey, go learn how to do it. Here, I'm giving you a free camera and a roll of film. You see what you can make. So yeah, it's, it's fun having all these cameras though, I will say, and I will definitely be buying more in the future, especially a medium format one. Like I said, I need to replace that. I, I need to replace one. So, ugh, cameras, man. Anyways, thanks for looking at my collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you stuck around through this whole thing, let me know in the comments. Tell me your favorite cameras. What do you own? Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Uh, at some point here, I know I want to get out on the street and taking some photos. So I'll probably have 
some video poll on my community page. So if you want to give suggestions on videos, let me know there. If you want to watch more film photography content, you can subscribe to this channel. If you don't like this channel, that's fine. There are plenty more out there that you can watch all about film photography. So uh, don't need to stick around. But hey, if you do like it here, I like having you here. It's fun. Okay, I'm done rambling today. I'll let you guys watch some more videos and I'll see you maybe in the next one. Let's make this a thing. Cool. Deuces.